Okay, everybody, welcome. What you see here in front of you is a PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller that I have completely dismantled and heavily modified to allow me to use it to interface the PlayStation 4 controls with arcade controls, arcade buttons and joysticks that would allow me to play Mortal Kombat 10 on the arcade machine that I'm building. A lot of you are familiar with the, the Mortal Kombat 10 arcade machine that I'm in the process of building and, and constructing and all that stuff and I needed a way to interface the PlayStation 4 that I'm going to be using to run the game with the controls that I want to use. Of course, you know, when you have an arcade machine, you want to use arcade controls, buttons and joysticks. So I have to figure out a way to, or I had to figure out a way to interface the PlayStation 4 controllers with the arcade controls. And that's exactly what I did, and that's what this is here. So what this is, is the guts and the main circuit board for a PS4 controller. And the first thing you want to do, I don't really want to get into too many details of how this is done. I guess I can, but for those of you who aren't familiar with electronics and pathways and circuits and traces and soldering, I really wouldn't worry about it too much, but um, there's not really much to it. Once you get the entire controller apart uh, and you, have, you break it down to just the circuit board, you're going to have this pathway, circuit, way, circuit pathway overlay, and this middle part here will, will fold back around like that. Oh, let me get on camera here, sorry. This, I was going to the wrong one. This here will fold back around and, and bend backwards, and it'll sit on top of here like this. And it, it mates up with this area right here. And that, when you press the buttons on this thing, it travels through these connections onto here and tells the game what buttons you're pressing. So once you actually take the controller apart, this is not needed anymore at all. All this is used for is tracing the pathways to figure out which connections go for which buttons. So once you figure that part out, it's not really too difficult, so you can actually take this and get rid of this completely. Uh, and once you do that, I actually made a map here. And if you, it's going to be hard to see because I already have all the connections hot glued in place. But uh, let's see if I can line this up better. You can see all the connections here under the hot glue that correspond to, the, to this thing where these connections right here go. So again, this just bends around and touches these contacts. So I made a little map here using this thing as a key. And when you take this thing and look at it, and you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine kind of staggered setup like this. The bottom right is the is the R2 ground, the top right is the R1 ground, and the next one's R2 and R1. So this layout here is what corresponds to these connections when they're bent back around and, and touch these here under the hot glue so uh, there's there's really not much to it as far as once you get everything mapped out you know where everything is going which connections are for what uh, you can solder your wires to those pads You're, there's a coating on those you want to scrape the coating off of it and once the coating is scraped off you can actually solder the wires to it fairly easily and then of course you want to verify your connections before you slap all this hot glue on there uh, me in my personal opinion is I put the hot glue on one side and then the other to keep the wires from moving and then I don't put any hot glue over the actual connections until I test them out for continuity and function. Once the continuity and functionality is tested out so you know that the soldering is good, then I put the hot glue over them to make sure that nothing uh, comes loose. So that's really, in a nutshell, all there is to it. Once you figure out the pathways and which wires go on which connections, uh, you solder them on there and cover it with hot glue to keep them from moving, and you're all set. But I will say there is kind of a major thing you have to accomplish with this, as well as doing the soldering, which is where a little expertise comes in, into play. Uh, it's kind of, kind of hard to be hard to see here, but on these right here, this little black deal right there, this is a an 8k ohm resistor. This black bar there is an 8k ohm resistor, and it actually goes in line with the grounds for L1 and L2. And then over here on this side, we've got another one right there. There's a little resistor right there. It's another 8K ohm resistor, and it goes in line with the grounds for L1 and L2. Uh, but the ground for the PS button is the same ground that, let's say, I'll, I'll rephrase here. Up, down, left, right, uh, square, or square, X, circle, triangle, and the PS button all share the same ground. So those grounds are all tied together, but the grounds for L1, L2, R1, and R2 have to have a, an 8K ohm resistor 
in line with each individual side. Now that's what these are here. It's kind of sloppily put together because this is just for testing purposes. Once I get everything ready to go and uh, ready to install, I will, of course, clean it, clean it up a lot better. But uh, these two resistors in, in series equal 8K ohm. Then I have another individual resistor here that also equals 8K ohm. So I have an 8K ohm connection uh, for the ground for R1 and R2 and an 8K ohm connection for the ground for L1 and L2. And they actually share the same ground, but you have to have the 8K ohm resistor. So you can see there are two wires on one side. There's two wires coming off of this side here. Get these out of the way. You got this gray wire and this yellow wire. Then I have another wire coming off of this side. So what it is is you've got the ground for L1 and L2 go to one side, and the actual button for L1 will come off this resistor. I had that backwards. I'm sorry. I had that backwards. This is the actual ground, and then it splits off and supplies a ground for L1 and L2, and then the other resistor is the same thing. You've got a wire providing a ground for R1 and R2, and it splits off and goes to each button. So, but you have to have those resistors in line, or you'll have all kinds of fidgety and and fidgety buttons and some buttons don't work and then if you bring up the message screen on the PS4 it'll immediately cancel itself out because R2 is the button that cancels the message out and if you don't have that resistor on that ground the PS4 thinks that R2 is pressed all the time so you have to have these resistors in line in the correct spots. And it's easy to figure out because if you take these resistors here and you just follow the pathways of where they go you can figure out how it hooks up and corresponds to this other round on the other end here. So um, that's basically it. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you don't know how to do it or aren't very good with uh, electronics or soldering and whatnot. But if you are, give it a try. It's not too difficult. Uh, it's the hardest part of this entire deal is just trying to get these wires to stay soldered onto the pads. Uh, everything else is fairly simple. You don't need this thing at all once you figure out the pathways which I've already done, and you guys can reference this video as to which contacts go to what buttons and everything. So, uh, you know, you've got all, and then the PS button has uh, just one button for the PS, one wire for PS button in the ground. So these two wires go directly to the PS button, and then f from there, it branches off and goes to all the rest of them for the ground. So uh, the only thing left to do is just test this out. And I had the battery unhooked so I don't ac accidentally turn on the PS4 while I was doing this show and tell here. So let me plug the battery in. Now we're going to test out all the inputs. So if you look at our handy dandy little uh, cheat sheet here, the PS button is the one, two, three, four, fifth wire on the bottom side. So we go to our bottom row here and I get the one, two, three, four, fifth wire, which is this one here. Then I, the ground is the one, two, three, four, fifth wire on the top. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. So when I touch these two wires together, the PS4 should come on. You should hear it come on, and it'll boot up, and uh, that will test out the PS button functionality. There you go. So the PS button works. The PS4 should come on here any second. There it is. Okay, so the first button we're going to press is going to be X to acknowledge this here. So X is the one, two, three, fourth one from the top right, which is right here. This wire right here. And then the ground is the one right next to it. So I touch these two wires. It should be like I'm pressing X on the, the joystick, or I'm sorry, on the uh, controller. There we go. X works. All right, so I'm going to have to go, the easiest way to do this is to go to the message feature, and I can actually show all the functionality of all the buttons while trying to type a message. So I need to go up. Up is the third wire from the bottom on the left, and I've got my ground, which is the this wire here. If I touch these two, up should work. There we go. And next to up is down. I'll get, wait to, I need to go right. Right is the third wire, which is this one here. Oh, that's left. Hold on. I need the third wire, this one. Here we go. That's one, two, three. Now I can't count. 
Write, write, write messages. Okay, now I need to press X again. X again. X again. I need to go right to get to done, which is one, two, three. That's left. Damn it, I keep grabbing the wrong damn wire. One, two, three. Okay, right. Oh, X first, sorry. X. Right. X. This is hard to do without buttons, sorry. But you get the idea of how this works. So uh, let's go ahead and test triangle while we're here. Triangle is the third one from the right, which is this one. So when I, when I touch these two wires, it should bring up the voice, record voice message. There we go. So triangle works. Now I have to go to the right again and select OK with X. Oh, I want to go back. Sorry. Uh, circle. Circle is the fourth one, which is this one. So circle works. All right. So there's our message. Now let me talk about this for a second. If you don't have the ground, I'm sorry, if you don't have the resistor in line with the R2 and, and uh, R1, R2, L1, L2, if you don't have the resistors in line, when you bring up the message here, it'll immediately shut down. Because R2 is the button you press to go done here. That's R2. Uh, so the machine thinks that R2 is being pressed all the time. So the resistors actually block that signal. You'd think it'd be a dial, but it's not. They're resistors. So with the resistors in line, I can write my message the way it's supposed to, and all R2 works, works normally. So uh, let me go through here and just double check everything. We're going to start with up, down, left, right. So we've got third wire here. We've got this should be up. There we go. And then we've got the next wire should be down. This should go back down to G. There it goes. Uh, third wire again. This should go over to H. There it is. And this wire should go back over to G. So up, down, left, right are good. Um, okay, X is the fourth wire. So this this should type the letter G. Oh, which one am I doing here? One, two, three, four. There we go. Types of letter G, so X is good. Triangle uh, is the space bar. Triangle will be third wire, so this should give it a space. There we go, so triangle works. Let's go down to circle. Uh, I don't think circle does anything here, but we already know it works, so we'll back out at a different point and try circle. Square uh, actually goes back. Square is the third wire, which is... That's the second, third wire here is square. This should take us back on a backspace. There you go. Now what's left to test is L2. L2 should change us up to caps. or already at caps, I'm sorry. It should take us down to lowercase. So L2 is the this wire here. And again, it's got its own ground, so it's it's down here. I've got it labeled on a long wire here. That's R2. Here's L2. L2 comes off the, the uh, resistors, and it's got its own ground here. This gray wire here comes off of these resistors, right? So you can see the gray wire there. It comes down around to this thing. So when I touch this, I should change between uppercase and lowercase. There you go. See that? So L2 functions. L1 uh, actually goes back, so I need to type some letters here. So now L1 is this wire, which is the same oop, the same ground. So now what should happen is the cursor should go back to the front, back to the beginning. There you go. You see the cursor is now at the beginning of the three Gs where it was in the, the back side of them. So um, L2, we did L1 is good, so now the only thing that's left is R1 and R2. R1 should move the cursor to the right. Let me grab its ground wire here, which is the second. So when I touch this here, the cursor should move to the right. There it goes. You can see it's now at the end of the three Gs. 
And R2 should should uh, cancel me out here. R2 is the second wire. So when I touch this to ground, it should cancel me out. There you go. Let's test the circle again. This is the fourth wire and the ground. So this should cancel me out of this. And there you go. Every button functions. So it's as simple as that. Um, finding your right pathway, soldering your wires to the board, making sure everything has a good connection, getting your resistors in in the right spot, and you're good to go. So next thing to do is to actually take these wires and make them longer or put some extensions on them and run them to my corresponding buttons and joystick, and I should be good to go. So I have to do this. I got to do this one more time to uh, for player two side. This is the first time I've done this. And I was able to get it successfully done the first try around, the first go around, so that was pretty good. So I have to do this one more time for player two, and I'll report how that went. But hopefully this answered a lot of questions, because I did have a lot of people asking me, how did I plan on interfacing the controls for PS4 with the NK10 machine? And it turns out that uh, this is the, uh, I don't want to say the easiest, but this is the most cost-effective way for me, because instead of having to spend a bunch of money on a bunch of interfaces and converters and stuff. I only got to buy one more joystick, which is 60 bucks, or controller, I'm sorry, I keep saying joystick. I got to buy one more controller, which is 60 bucks, and then if I hack it successfully like this one, which it shouldn't be too difficult, bam, that's all That's all there is to it. So um, everything is safe and secure. I'll get it looking better once I get it installed in the machine, but as you can see, it's fully functional. So any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate it.